Hi, and welcome to my talk on how Stunner is ready for anything, UVVIM's quantification in DLS for upstream and downstream needs. Quantifying protein concentration in solution can feel a bit like a dull activity, kind of like this. When all you're trying to do is get everything to the same concentration, and the solutions all seem to be lots of slow, one at a time, only kind of accurate options. Thankfully, Stunner is none of that. Stunner combines two different technologies in one instrument for the first time to enable answers on quantification and aggregation all at once. Two microliters of sample get you the concentration of your protein while making sure that you're measuring monodispersed proteins, not a bunch of aggregates. Here's how it all happens. Two microliters of sample is pulled into the microfluidic circuit. Within that circuit, the sample is read multiple times for UV viz and DLS data. UVVIS gets you concentration and DLS gets you size and size distribution. So one read offers quantification data of your sample and simultaneously gets you information about its quality, where, whether or not it has aggregation problems. Here's a closer look at how this is possible on Stunner. Two microliters is pipetted into the input well, and then the microfluidic circuit does the rest. The unique microfluidic circuit molded into stunner plates ensure that there's no cross-contamination or evaporation, and the fixed path lengths mean you know exactly what you're measuring. Two microcuvettes in the microfluidic circuit cover a wide dynamic range of 0.03 to 275 OD. And here's how it works. Samples, once they're deposited into that input well, are then drawn into the storage channel. A sample can be left behind in the storage channel for up to two hours without detectable evaporation. During a read, Stunner pumps the sample from the storage channel into the microcuvettes where the samples are read. Two different path lengths give us the wide dynamic range that I mentioned before. Concentration and sizing info from one microvolume sample means that you can avoid sending samples to the next step in your process if they have aggregation problems. So for example, the protein on the left in blue is a homogeneous antibody that shows no presence of aggregates. Great while the protein on the right in green has begun aggregating. So now you can catch those problems earlier with less volume and in the same step as quantification. Another application of this DLS data actually is in quantifying B22 and KD data. So this is actually has to do with protein-protein interaction and is a nice quick measurement of colloidal stability using light scattering data. So in this case, B22 is the second virial coefficient and KD is the diffusion interaction parameter. Stunner will measure the protein concentrations across a series of, of concentrations from about uh, one to 10 uh, milligrams per milliliter. And at the same time, we'll take light scattering data, either intensity uh, for B22 measurements or diffusion coefficient for KD measurements. And that'll give you a picture of the colloidal stability of your protein. If you see increasing slopes, like are shown here with sucrose, and uh, no excipient formulations for this protein, then you have repulsive protein-protein interactions, and that's great news. If you have flat or negative slopes, like are shown here for arginine and sodium chloride with this protein, then that means you either have neutral or attractive protein-protein interactions. And those are formulation and protein combinations that you should watch out for, since they're probably susceptible to aggregation. But that's enough about DLS. Let's turn back to UBVIS for quantification. With the fixed path length microcuvette technology behind it, Stunner delivers amazing results, accuracy within 2% and precision within 1% from 1 to 200 OD. Let's check out a few examples of exactly how great those results really are. Here we have examples of uracil and tryptophan NIST standards that are used to show off our fixed path length uh, being very accurate and precise. These are referred to as uh, standard reference material 2082 where the path where we're looking at for results that are within 2% uh, of the expected value. And in this case, for eight replicates measured across five sy systems, we see results all within 1.65%. Pretty great. Applying the same sort of test to a uh, NIST reference material 8671, also more commonly known as NISMAB, uh, we see a representative test for a actual therapeutic an or for therapeutic antibody characterization. Uh, so all measurements in the five tested systems in this case were within 1.25% of the 10 mg per mil reference concentration of NISMAB. And that's shown by the whiskers of the box and whisker plot. 
the mean concentration shown by the X and the mean median concentration shown by the green line uh, of those values of the 40 measurements were all within 1% of the reference value. So it's a pretty great example of how you can really quickly assay uh, accuracy for UV-vis performance on stunt. But for an even more real world example, we have a dilution series of IgG and PBS from two to 200 milligrams per milliliter. The UV absorbance range means that Stunner can detect all concentrations in this series without having to, to dilute at the upper end. The raw absorbance spectrum is shown on the left and the absorbance at 280 nanometers shown on the right shows linear, linearity with an R squared better than 0.9999. If we apply those results to determine concentration, you can see the spot on accuracy within 2% by comparing the known and average measured concentrations and the precision within 1% uh, by looking at the CVs of those measured values. Those are shown in the table on the right and looking at the left we again see an R squared value of better than 0.9999. If you want to show off the accuracy of Stunner yourself, we also have the fundamentals tryptophan standards to help demonstrate the accuracy, precision, and linearity of the instrument uh, and prove that at any time. Since they're tryptophan standards, they're used at a protein relevant 280 nanometer wavelength and an OD range of 20 to 225. If you account for the differences in molar extinction coefficients, the fundamental standards are equivalent to testing the concentrations of IgG shown from about 20 to about 160 milligrams per milliliter in terms of absorbance. The average concentration, mean recovery, and relative standard deviation of the target concentrations were calculated by Stunner analysis software for each of the standards. Plotting the average result of each standard shows the great linearity of Stunner over the dynamic range of uh, 20 to 225 OD, shown on the right, and again the linearity and uh, accuracy shown on the left by indicating a high R squared value and a linear slope very close to one. And if we want to quantify uh, the precision one step further, we can take a look at those data and see what our measured uh, concentration is relative to our target concentration and what our relative standard deviations are, all well within 1%. And Stunner also talks to robots, so you can hook it up with any liquid handling system and run the rest of your measurements completely hands off with our API setup, and that way you can keep more of your precious sample for the rest of your workflow. To help move Stunner downstream, it comes with the ability to do performance verification. Uh, this covers USP, United States Pharmacopeia, uh, Chapter 857, and European Pharmacopeia, Chapter 2225, for absorbance, accuracy, and precision, photometric linearity, wavelength accuracy and resolution, and stray light. So let's take a quick look at examples for those. Uh, to, to look at how well uh, we're measuring absorbance, we have uh, standards that meet the USP and European Pharmacopeia requirements for absorbance accuracy, precision, and linearity. Uh, in this case, it's three concentrations of potassium dichromate uh, in perchloric acid. Those are going to be references uh, called UV20, UV60, and UV120. Uh, that will cover measurements we need to take in the 200 to 400 nanometer range. Here's a look at the first result for absorbance accuracy with those standards. In this case, we're measuring those three cubet or those four cubets six times, and the means and standard deviations are computed at each of the four test wavelengths, 235, 257, 313, and 350 nanometers. So each absorbance spectrum crosses the dashed lines at the four different wavelengths exactly right. Uh, to visually show how narrow the tolerances are for what those absorbance values, values must be, uh, each spectrum must be accurate to less than the thickness of the line shown in the bottom right. And if we want to compare sample to sample precision, uh, here are actually six replicates overlaid on the same graph. It's a little hard to tell, but if you zoom in, you actually can see how, ac how precise uh, Stunner is, and all those precision, all those reads need to be within those green error bars shown at the inset. But right now, they're actually right on top of each other. And lastly, looking at photometric linearity, we can look at a linear regression of the means of the six replicate measurements at each, each tested wavelength of those UB20, UB60, and UB120 standards uh, plotted through zero and confirm the R squared value is greater than 0.999. So next, to look at wavelength accuracy, 
uh, we're going to be measuring the absorbance spectrum of a traceable uh, reference material with well-defined peaks at multiple wavelengths and comparing the measured wavelengths to the known peak, peak maxima. Uh, wait, where are those peak maxima for holmium oxide and perchloric acid are shown at the bottom of the slide. And here again, we have the results. So the acceptance limits of the measured peak maxima are calculated by adding the manufacturer's uncertainty to the acceptance criteria, uh, and they depend a little bit on the wavelength where the measurement is being measured, but it's easy to take a look at the results and see that all measurements are well within the criteria, with even the largest error uh, between expected and measured values actually only being 0.7 nanometers, uh, which is well within the most stringent requirement of this test. To look at spectral resolution, we're actually referring to the ability of a uv vis spectrometer to resolve speech features in an absorbance spectrum. Uh, the spectral resolution of Stunner is actually better than two nanometers. So if absorbance minima and maxima are at least two nanometers apart, Stunner can resolve those features. Uh, the uv vis performance verification test for spectral resolution is performed by measuring the absorbance spectrum of toluene and hexane and determining a ratio between the absorbance maximum at about 269 nanometers and uh, about 266 nanometers. The acceptance criteria for this test is a ratio of greater than about 1.3 to pass both the USP and European pharmacopoeia requirements. And again, looking at the results, we see that the ratio between the absorbance maxima and minima at those two wavelengths uh, is above the required ratio indicating a pass for this test for spectral resolution. And that brings us to our, our last test, which is for stray light. Uh, defined as any light measured by a UV-vis detector that's not of the identified wavelength. So stray light tends to have the biggest influence in the UV range, uh, which is also the most important range for nucleic acid and protein quantification. So Stunner maximizes linearity by minimizing the influence of common sources of stray light, like uh, internal reflections and second order diffraction, and UV-Vis spectrometers are required to define their stray light limits to comply with UV-Vis and European pharmacopoeia uh, guidelines. So in this case, we're using acetone, since it absorbs almost all light below 320 nanometers. So if any light is detected, then it's known to be stray light. In our case, we'll be looking for an OD measurement uh, at these three wavelengths, 260, 280, and 300 nanometers. So we're looking for an OD measurement uh, above three, and in this case, we can see that the absorbance uh, remains above that value for the whole range, um, but particularly at those three reference wavelengths that we're paying attention to. Uh, this means that any stray light in this region is less than 0.1% of the signal. So Sunder also reports these detailed results for a quick review and record keeping after each test. And you can also put the software on lockdown uh, with the 21 CFR Part 11 software tools available, uh, which means Stunner is ready for anywhere from research and development to manufacturing and QC. So you can unify your entire biologics workflow with the best and easiest to use uv -vis spectrometers available. And so that's how Lunatic supplies speed, accuracy, and a little bit of fun to uv -vis quantification. So now I'll ask, what questions do you have for me?